So we looked at adding and subtracting fractions. What is that like when I have mixed numbers? So if I have adding and subtracting mixed numbers, I have a few options. So I can still keep them as mixed numbers or I can make them into improper fractions and work with them that way. So let's just take an example and do it a couple different ways. So let's say that I had two and a fourth plus one and one fifth. So what I could do is kind of ignore my whole numbers which I think actually is a good strategy if you're adding. When you subtract, that can sometimes be difficult, but um, if I'm just adding pieces, it's probably best to just keep these as kind of two separate problems, knowing that you're gonna have to put them together at the end. So, if I have 1 fourth plus 1 fifth, I'm gonna go ahead and use 20ths because four times five equals 20. So to get from five to 20, I multiply by four. If I do something to my denominator, I have to do it to my numerator. Then one times four is four. To get from four to 20, I multiply by five. If I do something to my denominator, I need to do it to my numerator. One times five equals five. I now have five twentieths plus four twentieths, which equals nine twentieths. On this side, I have two plus one, which equals three. My answer is 3 and 9 twentieths. If I wanted to, I could make them improper fractions and go ahead that route. Especially if I were really confident with that skill. Now, if I had something like 3 and a half minus one and three-fourths. I can go ahead and kind of keep them separate if I want to, thinking about three minus one is two, and then I go to this one and try to take away three-fourths from one-half. The problem with that is that I can't take away three-fourths from one-half nicely. I can do that and get a negative number, um, so I can think about high of one half, I take away three fourths, that means I'm going to have negative one fourth over here, three minus one is two, two minus a fourth happens to be one and three fourths. So. If I want to use my knowledge of negative numbers and start kind of using those negative fractions, I actually could do that. Um, typically, that's not what we do. Typically, we want to think about regrouping some pieces to make this work better. So instead of three, I can take a whole away, change this to a two, and now I take a whole away. And remember that one whole can be two over two, three over three, four over four, five over five, six over six, blah, 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 blah. So here I can add and just shift this one to be a two over two, in which case this is now three over two. That still doesn't give me a common denominator, so I need to now change that to fourths. Three times two is six. I now have six fourths. Six fourths minus three fourths equals three fourths. Two minus one equals one. I still got one and three fourths. Now, let me go back to my original problem again and think about how I could also use uh, improper fractions for this. So my one half is pretty easy to change to fourths, so I know that that's the same as three and two fourths. 
So now I could go ahead and turn this into improper fractions. So I can think I have three groups of four. I have three groups of about four fourths. So I have three times four, which equals 12, plus two is 14 fourths, minus four times one is four, plus three is seven fourths. Now I have seven fourths as my answer because 14 minus seven equals seven. And now I just need to change it back into a mixed number. So I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four of those become a whole, and then I have three fourths left over. So those are all of the ways that I can go ahead and subtract mixed numbers, which becomes difficult when this bottom fraction is larger than the top fraction. If it's not, then it's pretty easy, and I just follow um, both sides separately the same way that I did for adding, and then I put them together at the end.